Remember the terminology crypto asset securities that Gary Gensler likes to use a lot? Well, the SEC has been lying to the courts about this term, and I'll share all the details with you and what the legal experts are saying and what may happen next. And Donald Trump this coming Monday is going to do an official launch of his crypto project. I'll share the details in the video he released. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. Folks, let's start with the price of Bitcoin because Bitcoin right now is over $60,000 once again. We're seeing a breakout upwards. Now, there's nothing to call home about here. It's a good sign that Bitcoin's making its way up. Remember what I was telling you guys, a key resistance level that Bitcoin needs to break through its $60,000. So this is a good sign, but it doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet. We are in bloody September. So this thing could pump a bit more up and then dump again before it finds its bottom in this consolidation phase and we get a true breakout. So I want to caveat what is happening right now with that information. Uh, however, we're getting more macro bullish news, guys. Here, Japan, they said the time is not right for the Bank of Japan to raise rates. So remember what happened at the beginning of August, the Japanese yen trade when Japan decided to raise rates, right? That caused a massive crash because people were borrowing the yen and, and, and investing in uh, US equities and so forth. So this is bullish that they're not raising. And on the flip side, we have cuts that are coming for rates here and the cuts have been taking place in the EU and so forth. JP Morgan released their analysis saying they're sticking to a 50 basis point rate cut for next week. So September 18th, we're going to expect to hear from the Fed that they are officially cutting rates. I believe it's going to be 25 basis points. I think uh, Jerome Powell and the folks at the Fed are not going to want to seem like they're politically favoring Kamala Harris uh, because cutting rates, you know, you tend to be good for the markets and the economy. And uh, they're going to slow walk this thing because if they go too aggressive, it will trigger some fears. People may say, uh oh, something's breaking on the back end. The data that's been shared with us is not right. Right? It's some, there's something happening here. So I don't think they want to spook the markets. I think they're going to start with 25. And look, come November, they may cut again another 25 or 50, right? But we'll have to wait and see. Um, I am anticipating the markets to react positively. Now, any week of any type of Fed announcement or things like that, there's a lot of volatility. So we do have to let the dust settle and, and look forward to the following week, right? We've seen these patterns before, and that's why I'm repeating them to you to, to remind you, because sometimes people are waiting in so much anticipation, they expect something to happen the day over the next day. No, no, no. Uh, markets are, are going to be volatile uh, uh, next week. So it's going to be a very interesting week, but good signs, guys. We're seeing good signs for the continuation of this bull market for Bitcoin to break out and go to new all-time highs. That is a process. Look towards Q4, not September, and then all coins will follow. All right, let's jump into the big news. Folks, this news makes my blood boil. I'm so pissed off. And it has to do with scumbag regulator Gary Gensler and the SEC. And, you know, sometimes I think I can't believe my tax dollars are being used for this nonsense. So, you know, the term crypto asset securities, that's a terminology Gary Gensler started using over the past couple of years, right? It's a way to uh, spread his narrative and gaslight people, right? To say, oh, all of these things are securities, right? But they're not. You have to litigate each one of them because because some of them are securities and some are not. Some are decentralized, right? Um, and we've seen a lot of court cases and battles and so forth. Obviously, the most famous is the Ripple case. And Ripple came out of that with the lion's share of the victory where XRP was declared intrinsically not a security. Now, specifically in the Binance US case, the SEC in their court documents added a footnote and they said that they regret any confusion they may have invited by falsely and repeatedly staking that tokens themselves are securities. <laughs> what? So are you telling me the, the head of the SEC has been saying these things on TV for years and the SEC is apologizing? But folks, it gets much more crazier than that. They're saying this in the Binance case footnote, right? That, oh, we're sorry. We didn't mean to use crypto asset securities. Uh, you know, we, we, we made a mistake here. But in the eToro case, where they just settled with the SEC, 
They use that phrase eight times. Jake Traversky here said, the SEC finally addressed criticism of its nonsense term crypto asset security by checks notes, lying about and abandoning it. So the SEC is going to amend all its other complaints to remove the term now to right? Right? I genuinely can't get over how insane this is. The SEC used the term crypto asset securities eight times in the eToro settlement order they issued on the same day they told the federal court they wouldn't use it to avoid confusion. This is what you call hypocrisy, lies, corruption. This is scumbag activity from a scumbag regulator. And that regulator is Gary Genser, who heads up the SEC. This is the same agency that got sanctioned and had to close its Utah office. This is the same agency that got called arbitrary and capricious in the Grayscale case. This is the same agency who's headed up by Gary Genser, who got threatened to be subpoenaed by a sitting congressman, Patrick McHenry, for not handing over FTX documents. This is what we're dealing with, folks. This is why we got to fight. These people don't care about the law because at the end of the day, they're answering to their masters, their puppets on strings. I've been telling you guys what the agenda is here. And Gary Genser, as I told you in yesterday's podcast, is being investigated by Republican uh, members of Congress because he's been accused of political favoritism. I've told you guys the, the, the political divide of the SEC. The Republican commissioners, Hester Persa Markiewicz, pro-crypto, trying to get clarity in the market. Uh, Gary Genser and the other two Democrats against crypto have been you know, doing a whole bunch of nonsense. And look at what's happening here. But folks, it gets even more crazy. They literally yesterday tweeted out a note here about crypto asset securities from the SEC's account. They said, five ways fraudsters may lure victims into scams involving crypto asset securities. Wait a minute. I, I thought you were just apologizing for, for the using this term. That is confusing and we, you shouldn't prejudge. This is nonsense. They're lying to the courts once again. They they want they're hypocrites. They're they, they will do anything. They they will break the law. I, I've said that many times. Uh Fred Rispoli, attorney Fred Rispoli, who I've had on the podcast many times, retweeted this tweet saying the post in and of itself is a scam as the SEC the same day swore to a federal judge that there is no such thing as crypto asset securities. I've requested this to be community noted. <laughs> Folks, you can't make this stuff up. Stuart Alderati, Ripple's chief legal officer, said, so the SEC finally admits that one, crypto asset security is a made-up term, and two, to prove a crypto asset security is an investment contract, the SEC needs evidence of a bundle of contracts, expectations, and understandings. Think it's time for the SEC to admit it has become a twisted pretzel of contradictions. Don't worry, I updated your logo for you. And he made the SEC logo into a pretzel. <laughs> Folks, uh, can you believe a government agency which is supposed to uphold the law, protect investors, is doing this type of activity, is lying to courts, right? Is breaking the law in many different ways. Unbelievable. But guys, uh, this is all because of disruption. They wouldn't be doing this if the TradFi incumbents didn't make the call to Gary Genser. As I've been saying, Gary's a Goldman guy. He's part of that Wall Street crowd, folks, and he's helping them to uh, catch up here because I've often stated, look at two things happening in parallel. All of Wall Street, BlackRock, Fidelity, and so forth are here issuing ETFs, doing tokenization, custodying funds for different crypto firms, while the startups... Coinbase, Uniswap, and uh, Ripple, and, and all these folks are getting Wells notices and they're getting sued. How can these two things be happening at the same time? Insane. But uh, we're going to win, folks. We, we are already winning because the courts are the ultimate balance of power here. And we're seeing Gary Genser is getting embarrassed and taking big L's in the uh, courts. But the problem is because there's no accountability, there's no one to hold him accountable. He's just going to keep doing it because to him, it's just like, okay, well, oh, we took a loss. Okay. I'm just going to keep doing what I want to do. I'm going to break the law. I'm going to lie. I'm going to backstab. I'm going to make up terms. And you remember crypto asset security, who else have you, we heard in the industry use that term? Prometheum. I had literally Adam Kaplan, <laughs> the CEO of that company on the podcast, and he was repeating that term. And I, I've been saying, I think 
uh, with the broker deal license that they got, uh, he probably made the promises. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that term, right? <laughs> this is why people have been saying it, Prometheum is shady. And I believe this is what Gary was trying to do with FTX. But unfortunately, Gary didn't do his homework, uh, didn't do his due diligence and his actual job. And FTX was scamming the hell out of people and stealing funds. And his whole plan fell apart when FTX collapsed. So this is unbelievable. This really pisses me off. And, uh, you know, Gary Gensler needs to be fired. And uh, we, we got to keep fighting. Now, a lot of folks weighed in on this. You can imagine all the lawyers and legal experts in the crypto industry were just angry as hell. Here, Catherine Mirarik of uh, Uniswap, she said, whether or not you care about crypto, if you care about fundamental fairness in our legal system, then you should be deeply concerned about what the SEC's approach to crypto has been. No government agency should work this way. Government agencies are trusted with enormous power to enforce laws, which is why they are required to give us all notice of, of their view of those laws before bringing the full force of the government against any of us. But the SEC is not just inventing new theories of how to apply securities laws in its crypto cases as it goes along. It is contradicting itself with, the, with those theories, sometimes within days or hours, often within the same courthouse. The SEC has active cases right now premise originally on legal theories that it no longer stands behind when pressed. But instead of dropping those cases, the SEC moves to a new theory and continues on. Why? She asks. I'll tell you why. The agenda. Kill these crypto startups so that the banking tradfi incumbents all of Wall Street can catch up. They can launch their own blockchains. They can build on these blockchains. They can sell you the crypto assets so that they can collect the fees and they can control the market like they have for a very long time. That's what's going on here. Why would an agency go, go to this length to lie and do all these things? Yes, you may argue that this is big government, right? And a lot of these agencies have gotten rogue. But when you look at the actions and once again, the two things that are happening in parallel, right? If Wall Street wasn't here and they weren't building and JP Morgan didn't have their own blockchain and BlackRock didn't have a Bitcoin ETF and so forth, I would say, okay, you know, this agency they're just crazy. They just want to collect a bunch of uh, fines from these companies. But th there's two things happening in parallel. They want to kill all of these uh, startups and those that are getting too powerful, right? And they're going after NFTs and everything. It's ridiculous at this point. But the industry is fighting back. The courts are the uh, balance of power. And the industry has raised over $200 million to fight back in uh, elections so we can get more members of Congress on board, so we can get legislation passed and put Gary Genser in his place. And here, Eleanor Terry of Fox Business reporting that the crypto industry has so far given over $190 million in political donations in the 2024 U.S. election cycle. Compare this to the 2020 election when crypto made up only $15 million in donations. So huge leap from last the last cycle in 2022, right? Incredible stuff. Um, even uh, a bunch of groups are forming to fight back. So here, Miles Jennings of A16Z Crypto said, it's time to fight for the right to create. Today, A16Z, Stand With Crypto, and OpenSea are kickstarting the Creator Defense Fund, a legal defense fund for creators using blockchain technology to connect with fans, monetize their work, and bring more creativity to the world. We're contributing $1 million and partnering with top law firms to offer legal services and consultations for artists and creators who are facing potential government action or simply want to ensure they are structuring their NFT projects in a legal and compliant manner. So we're fighting back, folks. The industry is not scared anymore. I remember when Ripple got uh, sued, everyone went quiet, everyone ran to their corners. Now, if folks are even being proactive and uh, issuing lawsuits against the SEC before they even get a Wells notice, which is great. And all the exchanges and firms that are getting sued, for the most part, the majority are fighting back. They're taking the SEC to the court. And look, I got to give uh, credit where credit's due. Ripple is the reason for that. Ripple fighting back and punching back at the bully uh, really gave the market confidence because people start to see the chinks in the armor of the SEC that they're lying. Uh, they're going to uh, do all types of nonsense and hypocrisy. Uh, let's not go into the whole Bill Hinman <laughs> hypocrisy stuff, right? And his speech about Ethereum, that was a big part of Ripple's defense because 
uh, the agency itself uh, is just corrupt at its core, and it has been for a long time. And then you add a scumbag regulator like Gary Genser into the mix, and it makes it even worse, right? So things have gotten worse. Um, but we're fighting back, and that's what we got to do. Now, something I missed, guys, and I forgot to tell you about yesterday. Um, apparently, and there's an article here from the New York Post on September 9th, Kamala Harris's donors pushed the nominee to fire FTC Chair Lena Khan and SEC Chair Gary Gensler. <laughs> I completely missed that. I think they see these people as liabilities and that they're just crazy. So they're saying, hey, kick these people out. So I think that if Donald Trump wins, we know he's going to get fired, right? Donald Trump made that very clear. The question is, will Kamala Harris do that? I think she will. I think she's going to get rid of Gensler and bring in someone new. Um, but look, I could be wrong. And we're still waiting for a full crypto policy, clear crypto policy from Harris's, from Kamala Harris herself and her team. So, uh, but this is a very interesting article. I, I think the pressure is on here. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is BitGo, which is one of the top tier custodians in the crypto industry. They're headed up by Mike Belshi, who's a web 1.0 and 2.0 legend. And uh, BitGo is working with many big players in the industry. They custody Bitcoin ETFs and so forth. They're working with Pantera Capital, Bitstamp Exchange, Bitcoin IRA. Uh, Nike uses BitGo's wallet services for their NFTs. Some of the services that BitGo offers includes hot wallets, custodial wallets, self-managed coal wallets, and NFT wallets. If you'd like to learn more about BitGo's services and their self-custodial wallet as well, uh, visit BitGo.com. Link will be in the description. Now, guys, Donald Trump, um, we know he's launching a crypto project called World Liberty Fi. And uh, he released a video saying that Monday he's going to be doing a Twitter Spaces to talk about it. So this is pretty big. Now, I'm going to play the video for you, but I want to caveat this. I am not supporting this project. I don't know the details. As always, we need to learn the details. We need to research it. We need to make sure this is not something that could make us lose our funds. It's not a rug pull. I'm not saying he's trying to do a rug pull, but as always, don't trust, verify. So whether you love or hate Donald Trump, that's not the point. It's not if you want Donald Trump to be president. This is a completely separate thing here that he's trying to do. So we want to make sure it's legit, but let me play the clip for you. Join me live on Twitter Spaces at 8 p.m. this September 16th for the launch of World Liberty Financial. We're embracing the future with crypto and leaving the slow and outdated big banks behind. So very interesting, you know, part of his announcement there, he said, we're leaving the big banks behind, the slow banks and so forth behind. So uh, I'm very curious, you know, how this will all work. So uh, I'll look forward to the Twitter spaces on Monday. I'm, I'm going to be joining that to learn more about it. And I'll share the details with you guys um, as, as we learn more. So uh, like I said, though, before you go jumping into, once again, you may love Donald Trump, you're going to vote for him. That's not the point. Before you go jump into this, Make sure you do your due diligence, okay, folks? Uh, final item here, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy have bought more Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, man, Saylor is a, a Bitcoin addict at this point. But look, he's making money, right? He's got the arbitrage going on with his company's stock price. That's why, in part, why he's so bullish. Uh, obviously, he believes in Bitcoin as a hedge as well. And uh, now they, well, it says here they acquired 18,300 Bitcoin for approximately $1.11 billion. This is incredible. He says they now hold 244,800 Bitcoin acquired for approximately $9.45 billion at uh, $38,585 uh, per Bitcoin. Wow, it's insane. Uh, he's headed for you know the uh, the top of the list. Obviously, Satoshi has the most uh, Bitcoin, and then these Wall Street ETF issuers, BlackRock and so forth, are climbing the list collectively. They're they're I think they're the second um, now collectively. Uh, BlackRock though is obviously the leader with the most. But uh, man, Sailor made the big bet. It's paying off for him. I was worried for him as we went through the bear market, but he made it through and. 
I think he's going to come out really rich and 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 successful with his bets. It's going to pay off because we're entering a new phase of crypto adoption. Folks, let me know what you think about the news. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Don't forget to sign up for my free email newsletter. It is 100% free. You don't have to pay anything. It includes crypto insights and knowledge. And also grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto. It's available on Amazon and barnesandnobles.com in paperback and digital. Grab a copy to support the podcast. Buy a few copies for your friends and family. Give it as a gift. They want to learn about crypto. It includes a lot of information about how crypto works, what happened with the SEC and Ripple, and why is Wall Street here, tokenization, what the future looks like. And if you bought a copy already, uh, please leave a rating and review. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you all later.